Um, hi guys. Hi there. Uh, back in 2007, one of your first uh, projects working on together was a short film called uh, Jay and Seth vs. the Apocalypse. It yeah. uh, hasn't been seen by the public yet, but it became the blueprint for This is the End. Um, will we ever get to see that short film and how did it develop into what is now This is the End? Um, you're going to get to see the short film on the DVD. Brilliant. Or Blu-ray. Or Blu-ray. We have to update our... It, it's Blu-ray. It's Blu-ray? You say Blu-ray. You just don't no. say DVD at all? I don't think you say DVD. But Do you say iTunes download also? Yes, I think you can. Pretty good. You can download it off. <laughs> you can digitally download it or find it on the Blu-ray. Yeah. VHS. But, uh, it's on there. It's, uh, it, it's very vague, the original thing. It's about me and Jay stuck in a house together as the world was ending. It's kind of like a zombie apocalypse in the original one. And and it's not really clear who we are so much. It's more just about like the dynamic, which is the same. We're arguing and kind of bringing up old friendship stuff. Um, how it evolved was that we always wanted to make a movie about famous people playing themselves, and then we kind of added this idea that maybe it could be like the Christian apocalypse over the years and years and years of talking about it, and then we kind of combined all those ideas to make this movie. Okay. Uh, this is the end, the final project, uh, is a who's who of comedians, actors, singers. Um, sadly, you didn't get Morgan Freeman, Daniel Radcliffe, who are on your yeah, uh, wish true. list. Yeah, it's true, you're telling us. But, uh, you know, how did you manage to convince the likes of Rihanna, Emma Watson, Channing Tatum to take part? Did you uh, show them the original short film, show them the script, or did you just take your word on it that it would um, be so awesome? Well, everyone who was involved, we kind of knew more or less in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them were really good friends with. Emma Watson and Rihanna were the only ones we didn't know whatsoever. Emma, we just kind of went for it. And Rihanna, Seth had read in a magazine, liked uh, Superbad and Pineapple Express, and we just called her up too. Yeah. We knew Channing. I knew, I, I, I knew him from before, and he was oddly enthusiastic about participating. <laughs> <laughs> How could he say no? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys have been friends for years. Uh, most of your writing credits have you working side by side. Together you've written eight projects, including Superbad, Pineapple Express, and even an episode of The Simpsons. Uh, but your first writing job together was on the Ali G show, and I was wondering how did that come about? Did you po apply, or did you come as a package, or yes. was it coincidence that you? No, we did? came at a package. Some producers tried to x me out, though. It's true. <laughs> you he, were too he expensive. He stood up for me because we traveled around with them on the road, and they didn't want to pay for both of us to go, and we made them do it. But uh, yeah, we. Uh, it was a Judd Apatow that yeah, he was looking got for, us the interview. Yeah, he was okay. looking for new writers, and we had written the script for Superbad at that point, even though it hadn't gotten made. And Judd knew him a little bit, and Judd suggested us, and we went in and met with Sasha, and uh, really got along, and, and then he hired us, and we're still friends now. I mean, it, it was a very great experience. Excellent. Um, comedy movies, as I was saying earlier before the cameras roll, comedy movies aren't usually well received by critics, but no. this is the end, it's currently riding high, it's the, the uh, 85 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which is of the top 10 box office in America, the highest rated movie at the moment. I was wondering, does critical acclaim like that matter to you both? Yeah, oh, yeah. it's really yeah. nice. I didn't think it would, honestly, <laughs> now, yeah. but I'm really happy that we only got for, Only for one reason, really, which is what you said, it's that comedies just don't get respected whatsoever, and it's just nice to see some critics actually... Yeah, take our stupid dick, jo dick jokes a little seriously. <laughs> but the thing is, like, and we we think that we're putting like some intelligence in these movies, even though they're so kind of dumb on the surface. And and it's nice when people take the time to try to recognize that because they do with I feel like dramatic movies much more easily. They really will read into it and think what they did. But the comedy, they they, they don't like to look too deep into it. So. Yeah, they just like there's two jokes they don't like in a row. And they're exactly. Just, they're so they're just like, like ah, oh, it's not good. Hell with yeah. this. this isn't a masterpiece. Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, while everyone in the movie is playing a parody of themselves, you really push the boundaries with young Michael Cera. And I was wondering, how many favors did you have to pay him back then <laughs> for that? And it's the crazy, he just did it. Yeah, he was yeah. so psyched about His it. His only was issue crazy. was he wanted to wear that windbreaker that he brought from home. <laughs> And besides that, he just did it all. And it ended up being brilliant. Yep. It was one of those favorites playing his grandfather in Arrested Development. It was not. That was no. coincidental. <laughs> but it's true. I am Michael Sears' grandfather. <laughs> just on that, in Arrested Development, did you have to do a lot of um, watching old episodes? And uh, I should have done more, probably. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a good Thank one. You. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.